economist, professor, researcher, and a leader. Pro-proper environment friendly and gender sensitive development paradigm. He is known in Bangladesh as well as all over the world banking sector for, her, for his innovative and unparalleled policy implementation to address the environment and humanity and comprising economic growth. He has been honored Central Bank Governor of the Year Forum Asia twice in 2015 by the bankers from UK emerging markets from the USA for his innovative and unparalleled policy implementation and central banking to address environment and humanity and comprising economic growth. He has been titled Your Money as Mr. Roman touches the ground and it bears fruit. He has been also awarded a GUSI International Peace Prize in 2014, the Philippine based USI Foundation. As our Deputy Governor has addressed him as a dreamer, may I please call upon stage for the speech, the Governor of Bangladesh Bank, Dr. Ati Rahman. A round of applause for our Chief Guest. Thank you. My <laughs> Secretary General of Asia Pacific Rural and Agricultural Credit Association, Mr. Kamnong Siri Ongiat, Deputy Governor of Bangladesh Bank and Chairman of Africa, Mr. Shitang Shukumar Shu Chaudhry, Chief Financial Officer of BRAC and BRAC International, Mr. Shib Narayan Koiri, distinguished participants from abroad and home, friends from print and electronic media, a very good morning to you all. The Central Bank of Bangladesh strongly believes that conventional short-term business cycle focused monetary policy and financial policies do not address the long-term needs of inclusivity and sustainability. Rather, the directionless pumping of liquidity by the name of quantitative easing contributes little in sustaining growth while only heightening the instability risk. As a very little of this reaches to the growth generating startups and SME businesses in the real economy. For some years now, Bangladesh Bank has therefore stepped up to impart a deliberate directional bias channeling financing flows towards inclusive financing of environmentally sustainable domestic demand-driven output initiatives. In fact, we have been following selective easing rather than and a wholesale uh, quantitative easing, as many people have been trying. Uh, we have been doing this because we felt that if we put money on the ground, and that, then only the, the ground will give you the plants and that will bear the fruits. But if you put the money on, in the air, you know, that will only create bubbles or can go somewhere else. You know? That has been our main concern and we have been really from the day one, you know, uh, I joined as a central bank governor in early 2009, it was in the middle of the global financial crisis as you know. So our, our drive was to be very selective in terms of providing money to those sectors who really bear food. You know, agriculture was one area where in fact we really put our focus and really provided a lot of money uh, to really produce more food. There was a time, as you know, Bangladesh, you know, it, back in 2008, Bangladesh was in deep crisis. The food inflation was going up almost 15 plus percentage, and we could not really import food. All our neighbors, you know, were reluctant to, you know, you know export food to us. And I thought that was a great lesson. And then we put all our efforts, so by now, we have become not only self-sufficient in food, but we are now, in fact, exporting food to our neighbors. So that's the kind of policies we have taken, and that has also, you know, smoothened our uh, inflation. In fact, food inflation has come down to nearly five percent. So that's how we are really 
uh, in a using our monetary policy for sustainable financing. <clears throat> Environmentally sustainable approaches targeting rapid poverty alleviation by opening up advancement opportunities for the un unserved and underserved are our policy priorities in promoting a socially responsible, inclusive, and sustainable financing agenda. Bangladesh Bank's financing strategy rests on ensuring adequate credit facilities for four trust areas of agriculture, micro, small, and medium enterprises, green output options, and digital inclusion. Stimulating rural demand and empowering women also bear significant importance in our financing strategy. Another element of Bangladesh Bank's initiative of mainstreaming socially responsible inclusive financing is the promotion of financial sectors, CSR, that means corporate social responsibility engagements in community development. Accordingly, Bangladesh Bank has directed all banks and non-bank financial institutions to allocate at least 10% of their CSR funds in the climate risk prone areas. Refinance windows available in Bangladesh Bank provide low cost credit facilities for environmentally benign green output options. Idle cash surpluses of Sharia based banks, that means Islamic banks, and financial institutions have also been induced into new refinance lines to support MSME and green financing. A US dollar 200 million longer term fund from Bangladesh Bank's own resources is being lined up to support green transition of our export oriented textile and leather sectors. We really indeed want to brand our apparel sector as green sector and green apparels, you know, probably people, uh, you know, consumers are very keen on, you know, in a green brand, and we really want to uh, transform our uh, uh, entire apparel sector into green sector. We have already provided some, uh, you know, refinance support to have platinum rated green apparel factory in Bangladesh. Ours is the number one in the world in terms of rating, you know, platinum rating of, of the green factory that we have been able to refinance from the central bank and the bank. Bangladesh Bank is also among the few central banks that are pioneering environmental risk rating of financing proposals by the lenders. And we make sure that the lenders really don't put in money for carbon producing kind of products. You know, rather they should help reduce the carbon, you know, in terms of uh, going into uh, energy saving and energy conserving kind of, kind of uh, initiatives. For ingraining the green or sustainability into agriculture, which is the, probably the key area of focus for Africa, uh, Bangladesh Bank has taken diverse policy and funding initiatives to promote sustainable agriculture. Channeling refinance to solar irrigation pumps, vermic compost, biofertilizer, biogas, organic farming, saline drought and flood resistant seed varieties, rooftop gardening, as you know, rooftop gardening means you reduce the heat, actually, you know, if you have, in this, for example, if the whole Dhaka roofs are all green, you know, the, the, the temperature of Dhaka would have come down by two to three percent. So, so we are really, from the central bank, we are, uh, we are promoting this roof gardening. In fact, in our, you know, you know Bangladesh uh, Bank's uh, training institutes, roofs have been piloted as, 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 as an area for experimentation for this kind of roof garden. Granting fund from CSI to conservation of wildlife. You know, we have been providing this support from our, even from our own CSI fund for a wildlife conservation, uh, for forestation of coastal region and natural crop reserve, that is cold storage. We have been uh, working with the banks to develop cold storage which are natural. 
you don't need normal electricity you know that kind of uh, cold storage we already we had one and next one is coming up pretty soon and we will be encouraging all the banks to provide corporate social responsibility support to have at least one of such you know you know uh, natural cold storage so that we have a green cold storage chains in in, in the, the country have really brought the financial sector to line up agricultural financing with green practices. In all this, partnership has been the key word in channeling needed fund to agriculture. Nearly one third of total agricultural credit that we give goes through the bank and microfinance institutions partnership. And Bangladesh Bank itself has gone into a partnership with uh, the largest MFI of the country, you know, the, the BRAC, where Mr. Koini is uh, the project director from their end. And would you believe it? We have provided 5 billion DACA refinance line straight from the central bank to BRAC, actually, for a revolving fund for providing credit to the share croppers, the tenant farmers. I, we thought tenant farmers are the wretched of the earth. Nobody gives them that credit. They don't have a land of their own. They don't have enough papers. So they are the ones who are always left out. So we thought we better hit them hard, you know, on the on the head. And and we provided this money to the BRAC. BRAC have organized small groups of, of tenant farmers and have innovated a credit line, which is very interesting. You know, unlike normal microfinance, this particular uh, you know, program, they have three installments. You know, the first one is after the first crop, the second one after the second crop, and the third one spans over the whole year, monthly installment to keep the habit of repayment. And BRAC itself provides extension services, marketing services, and all other social uh, supports. And you will be happy to know our evaluation shows that, you know, almost as, as many as almost nearly a million of the farmers have already benefited out of this program. 62 or 65 percent of these farmers are women farmers and their lifestyles of these farmers have gone up. You know, uh, the children are more educated, you know, nutrition is better up there and, and uh, it's, there has been a sea change in the, in the social development indices for these farmers. So this is something, you know, and it's very unlike for a central bank. I'm sure many of you have uh, uh, seen many central banks not, uh, you know, coming to have this strategic intervention where the, both the market and the government failing, you know, so that's how we are really coming forward to support the, the, the development process of the country. That's why we call ourselves a developmental central bank, than not a, not a normal central bank actually. Many people who are very curious, very suspicious of what we are doing, but now that the whole world is recognizing our efforts, many countries are now coming forward to really see what the hell is going on in Bangladesh, actually. And I'll be strongly advising you to go to film, see for yourself what we are doing in partnership with the, with the uh, um, other organizations, with the banks, and also ourselves. Over the past few years, Bangladesh Bank has been proactively undertaking necessary enabled initiatives for the banking sector, including a countrywide massive modernization of the payment system and financial sector IT infrastructure. With launching of Bangladesh Automated Clearinghouse, Bangladesh Electronic Fund Transfer Network, National Payment Switch, National ID-based EKYC, and most recently, real-time gross settlements. You know, these are indeed green initiatives as they, uh, in fact, cut down the use of papers. Actually, we from the central bank, we monitor the banks every third month. They have to report to me how much, you know, you know uh, carbon uh, uh, they are using, how much they are cutting that, and you know, they have to uh, give us their work styles and everything every third month. So we monitor that, you know, how... We are responding to the needs of the climate change, actually. And so, you know, digitization itself is very green, actually. That means everything is run without paper. And we really want to have a paperless.
kind of banking in the coming days. Outcomes of these initiatives are quite impressive and heartening. Bangladesh is on a steady spell of six plus real GDP growth for well over a decade now. In fact, over the last five years, our average annual growth has been 6.2 to 3 percent. In fact, this year, we want to have more. With downward aging single digit inflation, massive inflows of workers' remittances, rapid poverty alleviation, and impressive trends of social indicators. In fact, our exchange rate you know, uh, is one of the stable in the, in, the, in, the, in the region. This has been most stable over the last two years, in fact. And in the meantime, the reserves have gone over by more than you know, you know, four times over these five years. So, so it's now about seven months worth of import. We have the you know, reserves, which is 27 billion plus. So this is something, this is unprecedented because of the, of the kind of prudent monetary policy we are following. In fact, the financially inclusive campaign that we are really uh, 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 pursuing has already democratized uh, our financial system and also legitimized our, in fact, intervention. Uh, uh, I just want to tell you, you know, over the last five days, we were having a banking fair. You may have seen in the newspaper today, just to conclude it yesterday, thousands of people, both young and the old, are come, we are coming to the fair, asking different questions, the customer interest, and the, the, what, what the banks are doing for them, and why they're not giving the best services. And it was really a scene to be you know, you know, really uh, reckoned with. And I was very impressed. In fact, in one of the occasions, we, I was sitting with the customers, and there were 14 uh, you know, CEOs sitting on that podium, and customers were asking them questions, and they had to really answer them in front of the governor. And that's how we made almost it a public inquiry kind of, kind of thing. That's how we're making it a humane banking, you know, humane sector, the financial sector. And Bangladesh is pioneering this. Probably all the 57 banks were there and all the other, uh, you know, uh, mobile financial services and all that were there. You know Bangladesh is also pioneering a bank-led mobile financial services which is one of the best in the world now, you know, coming up, uh, uh, you know, our rickshaw pullers, you can see in Dhaka, almost all of them send money through the mobile financial services to their families. You know, that is, has been possible because of the proactive initiative that the central bank has taken for them. So this is, on the whole, is bringing a financial stability. Our financial inclusion is bringing financial stability and social cohesion among our people and people are, in fact, rural economy is the main beneficiary of this. The real wage in the rural sector has gone up by four times over the last five years and that has been a very big thing that, the, you know, a lot of small and medium enterprises are now coming up based on this rural demand, actually, you know. So I'm so happy to see that our monetary policies and, and the central bank uh, credit policies are really bearing fruits. Uh, looking forward, we need to take a number of important measures to ensure a sustainable financial system in Bangladesh. The guideline and practice of environmental and social risk management should be continuously reviewed and strengthened accordingly. We are also focusing on greening the SME credit policy and ensuring adequate financing facilities for alternative power generation options. These initiatives would be complementary to the real economy measures such as environmental regulations and fossil fuel subsidy reform. I would like to conclude here with a quote from the recently launched report on designing a sustainable financial system in Bangladesh by the United Nations. As you know, United Nations uh, environment program uh, you know, uh, formulated a uh, sustainable uh, finance, uh, uh, de designing a sustainable finance policy. I was one of the members of the, of the advisory council of that policy. Uh, uh, they launched this program in Lima, you know, this year. On the, I'm sure many of you have seen that. And there we have, you know, really Bangladesh was highlighted as one of the countries where the green financing taking place. 
uh, and there, uh, there is in the concluding lines of that report in, in, on Bangladesh, they say there are opportunities to go further and accelerate progress to generate a vibrant green finance sector in Bangladesh. The ideas could be developed into a roadmap with leadership and involvement. I think leadership matters a lot. And I know many of the leaders from all the region of this region are here, and we would love to work with you. You know, you know actually, we want to share our experiences, and uh, yeah, we also want to learn from you. You may have been doing many innovative approaches in your own country. We want to project our ones, so together, this region will go ahead. Asia, you know, is the is the is the is the focal point now for the for the next. Uh, uh, decades or so, we will be at the center of attention because of our very innovative policies that we are taking in this region. So I believe with our concerted effort towards building an environmentally sustainable green economy, we will be well positioned to achieve the new sustainable development goals of the United Nations well ahead of time as we did in the case of Millennium Development Goals. I'm quite confident that we can do this given the heightened levels of motivations and commitments amongst the leaders of the financial community in Bangladesh. I'm sure the region as a whole will have the same commitment to go green and to really you know, you know, achieve the sustainable development goals well ahead of time. With these few words, thank you, uh, and uh, I really want to declare this workshop open. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Atul Rahman, for this wonderful and useful speech. <clears throat> now, may I please welcome Mr. Chan Long Sir Yongyata, Africa Secretary General. A round of applause for our Africa 